Well, hello everybody. Today we are going to cover how to paint fire and flames in watercolor. And we're going to touch on a couple different ideas and uh, going to go over how to draw candle flames. If we have time to for it, we might even go to ice or that might be another video. And how to draw flames that look a little bit more wild than just a candle flame. So flames in general, I like to use a flat brush. Uh, preferably a small flat brush because most flames are made out of cone to like shapes. So just like we have right here with this candle flame, we're going to create a cone shape. And then we're going to round that cone shape out and have the edges point towards the middle. So what's really important here is that those edges come back in sort of like tweezers come back in, they point towards the middle. Now with flames, you can really get a lot of mileage out of very watery brushes because as the flame goes away from the source, it becomes more and more transparent. Because after all, flame is just plasma. It is, it is not a liquid or a solid or a gas. It is another state of matter. So right here, I'm just gonna add so my orange towards the base of my source, in this case, like the wick. And colors in flame, colors in flames really just start out really intense near the source of uh, the fuel. And they get lighter as they go out. And I'm adding a little, tapping a little bit of red in there, just around that area. And then I'm going to get a little bit of blue. And away from it. I'm going to leave a little bit of space in the very, very watery blue. A lot more water. This is about five or six parts water, maybe one part blue. I'm just kind of coming in here and grabbing like a, a halo of blue kind of around the bottom of this flame. And you can kind of make it a little bit sketchy if you want to, adding a little bit of waves of water coming out. It might be a little hard to see on the video, so I'm going to make this just a little darker by tapping in some color into my little halo. Now, this should not be a perfect ring. It's going to be kind of a sketchy line where you're just using the flat of the brush to make curved lines around the flame. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of brown and actually some black for this whatever is burning because... There we go. And we have a something on fire, a little stick or a candle wick. If it's a candle wick, I guess it'd be a little bit darker up here. Now we didn't use very much red at all, just a little bit, a lot of orange and a lot and a lot of yellow. Now, this cone changes direction based off the wind. So if you're drawing a candle and it's very windy out, the cone might shift over to the left or to the right. But we're still gonna kind of keep the middle of it around our source. Because if you think of the flame as sort of like a little circle of an explosion around whatever fuel you're burning, and then it just kind of lifts up in the air and trails off, that's a really good way to think about it. In fact, in space, Flames d just look like that. In space, flames are, when they've lit a candle in space, they, they, they there's really cool footage, footage of it. They've just got this circular kind of explosion that happens. A little bit of blue. Because there is no real up for the air currents. There's no real density with no gravity. So everything just kind of stays in this really cool, like dandelion-like explosion. Pretty cool. Anyway, so that's candle flame. That, but what about full-on fire? Well, when you're drawing kind of wild motion fire, what I like to do is I like to kind of start out with my reds. I just like to come in and I like to add a few lines that get bigger towards the bottom. So I'm starting at the same spot, and then I'm just changing a little bit of where I go, creating these S-curve shapes, 
and then I'm doing some on the other side, curving out as we go. And letting the brush just slowly die off, creating lots of little transparent reds in this area and letting things move around, kind of creating that same ball explosion on, at the bottom here. Now I'm gonna go in with some orange and do the same thing, a little bit watier orange. I'm just gonna go over the red. Kind of like the orange is an aura or a halo around everything that we did red. And you really wanna use water. When, they, when you start getting streaky, that's when you just need more water because streaky really doesn't work for flame. And last but not least, the yellow. And the yellow we're gonna just really layer on above these other colors, not as much on top of, just more above. Looks like I had some pollution in my yellow. That's okay, I'll just brush that away. Pull some yellow in between here. And with a big flame like this, you don't always see the blue. The blues that happen, if they're there, they're, they're, they're kind of hidden and drowned out by everything else. The yellows and the oranges really take over. Still, I'll throw a little bit of blue at the bottom. Now I'm just going to add some stuff for it to burn. At this point, I'll just add maybe some debris. It's just some lines going back and forth. Maybe this is like an old barn that people are taking down so that way they can build a new one because the old one was all falling apart and wasn't worth saving, so they had to change it up. So we got all sorts of planks and wood and interesting stuff in there. Because wall fire is destructive, we can use it to really clean up and make stuff better. And... Adding just random lines like this that have some degree of structure that look that they square off every once in a while really is a good way to draw debris without having to really focus too much on it because debris can be challenging. It's tough to make stuff look like organized but also falling apart. I like to do that by adding some random size stuff attached to it. Maybe there is a cross beam here. There we go. And that is how to paint fire. And you know, you can use the same techniques with other colors to create kind of a kind of a more fantastic flame if you wanted to use blues and greens. Create something out of fantasy or superpowers or what else is going on there. Remember, just always work really wet. Let the water do a lot of the work for you. Now, if you're going super detailed or cartoony, you can always kind of come and create what I call like the crab claw effect for, for some flames where things loop back on themselves and create like this curve right here, this curve that comes down and then back up into a point. That curve is a very, very, very big in flames. And if you, you draw like sports car flames, like stuff that's going on like the side of a vehicle to look cool, the really, this is used a lot. This this curve here and an, an opposite curve that goes the other way. So curve out like this and then an opposite curve on the other side. And then just trace that curve out, making a cone. Come back in. 
And you're really going to create lots of little S's. Like this is a letter S right here. This is a backwards letter S. Another backwards letter S where they touch at the top. Another forwards letter S. And this is the more like the hot rod style flames. Not more really natural looking, but they are graphical. And they're really fun for creating stuff. This is this sort of like is reminiscent of like the flame arrows from um, Breath of the Wild, which were more like like this. That's a really terrible flame arrow from both of them. Oh, well. Have some fun. Try out some flames today. Post your pictures on to Seesaw. Have a good day.